So hi everybody. So my name is Peter Ng. Um, I'm going to do a talk today on how to add IoT to a TinyML project. So all of us here are excited about TinyML. We're all building models. We're using Edge Impulse. We're using TensorFlow. We're using Jetson Nanos, Raspberry Pis. Um, but sometimes the question comes like, where, what next? How do you connect your device to your application in the cloud? So there's many ways to do it. You can obviously go with LoRa. You can go with Sigfox. You can go with um, Cellular NB IoT. And all of them work, um, some of them better than others, some have limitations, but one of the one of the challenges to adding this to your product project is you always have to add, think about your um, connectivity uh, data plan, uh, if you're using cellular or if you're using even Sigfox um, or one of the other private, um, or one of the, the other subscription-based models, LoRa, you've got infrastructure, you've got to build yourself. And then there's of course the RF component and the, the, the hardware and stuff. So Blue's Wireless, has been born out of the, the the need to actually solve some of the problems and challenges in IoT and adding an IoT solution to your project quickly. So this allows you to focus on your application and not stress about um, not stress too much about the actual um, um, IoT connectivity. So that's just bio there. Um, so uh, yeah, I'll work with uh, the Tiny Mel Foundation in South Africa to try and promote and spread the word here and get it going. And also with Edge Impulse um, and Blues as an amplifier. So Blues have an amplifier program. So I've got a T-shirt here. So basically, just basically we promote, uh, almost like ambassadors for them, promote the product and do projects and help the community. So anything you want to do, anything you want to build, um, you know, there's an email at the end you can reach it. And also working with ARM. Um, so, um, yes, so basically... Um, this is the philosophy behind Blues. So just a little bit of history behind Blues. Blues was started by Ray Ozzy. And for those who don't know, Ray Ozzy was one of the uh, like archi chief architects at Microsoft. Uh, he was the guy that Bill Gates actually, I think, handed over the reins to on the Windows plat platform and also the original creator of Azure. So uh, there's a long history behind this, where this comes from. Um, I know it relate, goes back to the, the, the earthquake in Japan. And there will be obviously, um, we'll be having a... Um, uh, uh, like an innovation coffee soon on this as well. We, uh, Rob and the guys will probably unpack that a bit more as well. But yes, yeah, so essentially the solution is to make IoT easy and affordable and to add it to your application quickly. So yeah, the, the, whole, the whole point is ease. And you'll see what I mean when we go down. So we're a bit pissed on time. So I've put together some demos. Um, I've just laid out some in the camera. I've got some hardware to showcase here, but I'll try and show, I'll just try and show it to you guys um, as I go along. Um, most important security. So we all know security is a big issue right now. We're all trying to actually um, keep keep uh, our communication secure. So Blue is a secure end-to-end -end, um, product. Uh, so your your data is not transparent when it goes out, and that's of course important for you know issues we have today. And again, the good part about it is it's zero config. So once you get this thing up and running, um, you can just send data to it, and off you go. You don't have to think about modems and stuff, which I'll explain now. Um, again, unmatched developer experience. So this is interesting. When I first used this product, I was I was quite surprised because having fiddled, I know Marco, you've also done a lot of IoT stuff. You know, one has to fiddle to get things to work and stuff. This is quite um, this is quite quite it's quite useful. So you'll see. So again, yeah, that's Ray's uh, Aussie's um, one of his uh, things he said. One of the philosophies behind this. So we didn't start. So the, the whole product starts with the note card. So the note card is referred to as a, a cloud uh, data pump. So you, you don't you don't really the way you use this device you don't actually even think you don't have to even think about how it works. You don't have to worry about what's components on the board or anything. It's built on a STM32 platform, ARM based. But um, again, you don't have to worry too much about it. You can see think of it as a pump. It pumps data like like a water pump will pump water through your to your tap. This will pump water up to the data up to the cloud. And will receive data as well from the cloud. So you've got uplink and downlink connectivity. So if you compare this against things like um, like Sigfox, for example, we have limited data plans and limited downlink connectivity. This is targeting those kind of applications as well. So um, I'm going to do a little hands-on demonstration at the end. Hopefully, there's enough time. Um, so yes. So the question is, why blues? So I got my hand like the guy. There. Why blues? Um, what's what's the reason for it? So. Again, it's easy to use. Um, you don't have to understand modem SDKs, hardware interfacing. Uh, there's a free data plan. That's the neat thing about this. This device works in 140 countries um, around the world, 140 plus over 140 countries. It's all the countries that are we can essentially roam with a, with, a, with a phone. It'll work there. So you can literally take a device, build it, and you can ship it to any uh, country. And 
works. Yeah, it, work, it just works. It'll just work. It'll connect via um, onboard some with the international plan, and we'll just connect. And it takes a few moments to connect, and that's it. Off we go. Um, the simple hardware interfacing. So there's no need to. Um, well, most 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 modems you interface to anyway by IPC or CL, but but this is no different. So it's simple to interface to. These from a software point of view, there's no need to understand the uh, 80 command sets or to SDKs, uh, proprietary SDKs to communicate with modems and stuff. So this works with a simple JSON uh, string which you send to the device over over a serial port. That's it, and then you tell it what to do. Um, it's got a standalone mode where the note card itself actually um, actually um, interfaces. Let me just show you one here. It interfaces um, it's got its own built-in um, microcontroller, and that, and that basically um, there's a note card there on a on a carrier board. So so it's got it's got its own built-in uh, like MCU that you can't actually access. So you can't actually write applications on it. But it has got a built-in firmware where it can do a few um, things like it can, it can function. It's also got a GPS uh, on board as well, actually on the on the on the node card as well. So it's got a modem and a GPS. So if you run it in standalone mode, it can actually run as a GPS unit without any code. You can actually set it to update at certain intervals. So there's the node card there, uh, the radio chips are at the back, and it's got this little modem antenna. So the one there's a dual antenna, there's a GPS and um, GSM or 4G antenna. You get two node card variants. You get a wideband model, which is essentially like 4G, and that works in most places. And then you get a 5G NB-IoT one as well. So you choose the one that matches the region. So I've tested both, for example, here in Africa and South Africa. Both work, because uh, we do have NB-IoT and 5G here. Um, and then that's it. And then the the so the one way you use it is to use it standalone, and you can integrate it into your own application. It, they connect to the to the PCB via an M2 connector, which is like a little little connector like that. You just put it in and you screw it down. Or you can use it with your host, and that's obviously where with TinyML, you'll use it in that kind of application. We will actually write code um, to actually send your 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 whatever you want, like your model inference um, output via this to 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 the destination. So these are like I said, there's a 5G and a, and a 4G card. There's also a Wi-Fi card. It's actually attached to this board here. The Wi-Fi card is useful for when you want to deploy like um, and use the same integration mechanisms like the, the JSON API and just let's say you don't want to use like an ESP32 and and uh, or something or U blocks and something on your board and you want to just use a simple code, then you get the Wi-Fi node card. Also, it's useful for testing your application to save a data plan. So the data plan um, it comes with is 500 megs, and it lasts for 10 years. So when you buy the device with the cost of the of the of the the note card, or the, the note card, you automatically get 500 megabytes. Now it doesn't sound like a lot, but if you think about applications for IoT and sensors, that's quite a lot uh, to, and it can get you going for quite a while. So especially if you compare to the likes of like a Sigfox or something like that, this can keep you going for. That's why it's got a 10 year um, rollover on the data. So it won't, and you can top up data as well if you need more. So you won't really use the stream multimedia. So you won't be using this for your um, like um, stream video feeds out and stuff like that. You'll be using it mostly to send your metadata out or your results of your inference or like smart water meters, pumps, et cetera, electricity meters. That, that's when you kind of use this thing. So again, the, 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 sometimes you don't want to waste your data, then you can just use the Wi-Fi one and you set it up the same way and then you can just swap it out before you send the device out. So that's also a good debugging tool. So, it's got a, it supports, um, I think, an active antenna as well and a passive antenna. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I must, and then anyway, so it's a low system, it's GPS, cellular, or Wi Fi, and you're not found. So they have mentioned all of that. Oh, and then to integrate to it, you can either connect to it um, over seal and just send data yourself, or you can use a C JSON or a library in Python. Python, you can use the JSON functions in Python or Arduino JSON. But Blue's also provide an SDK that you can use in Python, Go, Arduino, and of course for C++ and C. So you can actually um, you can actually use that in your drop it library in and just use that. It's quite then it, you don't even have to even know about much what's going on. Um, really, Blue's makes it easier, but that just makes it even easier. Um, so yeah, low bandwidth, edge computing. So I think I've covered that. And of course, you can quickly build a turnkey cloud integration. Um, yeah, you can, yeah, sub, yeah, so, 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 obviously, you, you get, you, you, yeah, these are the things you, you, you obviously won't see, um, Wi-Fi still, is still there, 
if you need it for, I mean, sometimes if you have Wi-Fi, just use Wi-Fi. This is if you're putting something out in the field somewhere. Again, like I say, a smart sensor to detect a cow tracker, for example. And of course, video streaming, you won't do and You won't get sub millisecond latency on this because obviously there's a round trip time to the whole system. So when you buy your note card, obviously you need to attach it to something. So like I mentioned, there's obviously, um, it goes in a little uh, M2 connector. So there's multiple options. You've got your note KAF, which is the one I've got here, which I showed you guys. Um, I've got one running here as well. And then you've got the, I actually will show you over here quickly. You've got, you've got the, the, the green boards are the, are the, are the older ones. So on the left uh, in your vision, there is the old note carrier AF. So that 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 one is where you attach a microcontroller. So it's actually got it's actually got an added fruit feather header, and you can attach any feather compatible microcontroller to that. Um, but again, this one is deprecated now. It's been it's been replaced with the black one. I show that the F, and then of course you've got the note carrier B, which is more basic for applications where you want to just add a note carrier, and you don't need you don't need to add you don't want to use the, the feather. And then, of course, you've got these ones over here. These ones here are, are basically, um, my video is a bit bad here. These ones here are the are, are your note carrier A's that you can use for, um, you'll see the new ones are black, but but uh, they, they stand alone. So this one's got a battery all in the back. So these are like, if you want to build a quick tracker, you can actually convert this. So you can actually use these as products ready to go. And then if you are using a Raspberry Pi, What's great about the Raspberry Pi is that you actually get um, you get the, the, the Node Carrier Pi. It's got a dual dual header, so you can you can stack, and it just literally goes onto your onto your Pi like 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 a, like a, like a hat, and then you can stack more headers on top of it. So that that means you can you can actually take a Pi and stick it out there as well. So that that's quite that's quite useful about it. And then I mentioned um, about the the Adafruit Feather. So Blues have two um, microcontrollers. They actually supply the one is the is the 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 the, so the, the Adafruit I think Hazza is the Hazza is the Speed Thirty Two based one. So this is useful and you can actually attach it to your to your um, into your node carrier. Um, and then you have obviously the Swan, which is Blues' own STM Thirty Two based uh, dev kit, also in a feather form factor. And this one's quite nice because it's well priced and um, it's got a nice, decent MCU on it. And they target MicroPython on here as well. So a lot of the documentation you'll find actually shows you, you know, approach it to use MicroPython. So, and also you also have, um, if you want a breakout board, you can attach it to as well. That's also an option. But I think for a lot of people, the, the Note Carrier um, B, which is quite small, will be useful to attaching to, for example, to your existing Arduino um, or to even to your PC if you want to by USB. So that that's 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 how easy it is to use. So if you look down here, I've got I've got a um, I've got a note carrier F with a with a with a with a note card in, and I've got obviously the the, the Swan. This is the new Swan three. So this one I showed you there was the Swan two. This is the new Swan three. There's a slight difference in in the in the, in the design. And there's a new feature I'll talk about later on as well. One of the nice features of the Swan 3 supports the quick connector, that if the Spark Fun quick, quick, quick connector. So a lot of the, the, these boards support that. So it's for quick and easy connectivity. So just skipping ahead quickly. Um, so if you want to send um, data, you, 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 you can give you, this is an example of getting a GPS coordinate out of the card. You literally open your steel port, you literally send that JSON command, and you wait a few seconds. And the G onboard GPS reports back as a JSON um, uh, formatted response, and you can use Arduino JSON. You can pass that. You can, now you can imagine if you've worked with GPS before and the NEMA stuff and all that NEMA stuff and it, and had difficulties to write passes and stuff. This is it. You can and you can use normal JSON um, libraries available like Arduino JSON or Python if you're using Arduino, Raspberry Pi. It's, it's just simple, and you can get um, temperature from the device as well because it's got an onboard temperature sensor. You can get the accelerometer reading, and you can get um, uh, humidity as well. So what's cool about this is you can set it in st standalone mode also as a tracker without a host of MCU, where you can tell it only on like vibration or movement startup uh, and send and send a, a GPS message up. So that that that's an example of getting data into your MCU, but that's just, that's the data that goes up. So now the question is, let me show you a, 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 you know, a demo. I'll, I'll explain some of these other things afterwards. So let me let me just switch screens and show you a demo because the demo obviously um let me just find it here quickly. Okay. 
Okay. Tell me if you can see my web browser. Assume you can see it. No. No presentation. Yeah. Okay. Let me just let me just see how to uh, exit the presentation here. Now it's uh, a big a big board. Uh, I think oh. it's the, a Zoom version of the browser, I guess. Oh, Zoom version, Blues, okay. Blues.io. Okay, cool. Yes, oh, I see, I see, I see. Okay. Let me just minimize all this other stuff here. Um, okay. Okay, I see that. That's a issue. Okay, now you should see it better now. So, so, um, can you see the screen where you see on the right hand side it looks like a console? So I have to ask. Yes. Just, yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Cool. So the, 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 this is the 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 the, the way you, this is this is like a web sale. So this is a web recipe. So this is what Jamie was referring to earlier. This is just um, like a putty running your browser basically, so I can connect to the to the card. Um, the only problem I'm having here now is my all my there we go. Okay. Cool. So I'm connected to the to the to the um, to the device. So I can show you an example. I can send a message like this to the device to say um, request a note add. Obviously, I've set the device up already, so I'm not going to show you that. that. That process is quite straightforward. It's all in the guide. But essentially, you can literally just send any message you want. So yeah, I've just created a message pressure and bump detection, and I've sent like a like a label result of a classification. Maybe you've built a, a classification model to detect uh, somebody dropping the device, and then you set it up, and, th and then all you do you just send you just send up sync. And then if you look in the, so what happens is behind the scenes, the note card then communicates over a secure channel to note hub, which is the back end. So there's, there's three components. There's note card, note carrier, which is the hardware, and then there's note hub, which is the back end. So you can think of, if you ever work with Sigfox, it's like the Sigfox back end. It's pretty much like that. It's a, it's a back end where the data then gets relayed onto your application. So I'll show that to you now as well. So if you look here, um, I was playing a bit earlier. See your picture. You can see your events. So there, I just sent that message now, 5.48 in my time. And there, there's the message. There. So that's it. Message is sent. Now, um, to use the device, I mean, to use the message in your application, you can set up routes. So you can create routes. You can you can create um, um, HTTP requests. So you can use a web API. So you can, if, you're, if your backend supports that. Um, you can talk to AWS IoT, you can talk to Azure IoT, and there's an MQTT client as well. So you can basically um, easily integrate this into any um, application uh, on your site. So, and I mean, that, that's pretty much how easy it is to use. So, so you can free, free form and create your own payloads and then just um, communicate like that. So that's one product suite I wanted to show. Obviously, running time is tight. So the other thing I wanted to show you guys was there's a, there's a LoRa-based um, solution called the Sparrow. So what what that looks like is um, you, you you take your you have these these this is a dev kit you can buy. It's got um, it's got um, a, a LoRa-based STM I think WL in, in here, and it's got a motion detector and and the board you can reprogram. You can actually reprogram it using a normal ST link. And then this connects um, via um, you plug in another you plug in this this essentials board into your your device with a quick connector I to C, and then you pair it up, and then you can actually have LoRa nodes all 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 around like your your building, and you can actually and this is a reference design, so you can obviously modify this design and actually um, take it and actually do um, you know you, you can you can use it and build your own product, or you can actually modify these and actually it's got headers on so you can actually modify it and it's low power so it's a it's a, it's a it's not a LoRa WAN it's just a LoRa uh, based kit so yeah so that's basically the hardware and yeah so we're running out of time um so I showed it there one thing we have and I'll show it quickly at the end is a link um we have on um we have a free giveaway for anybody who's willing to um submit a cool project I will provide the, the, the email address in the chat and it's also on the last slide. And so we'll be giving away two starter kits. So the starter kits are, um, let me just quickly share, change my share again. The starter kits are, um, just a minute, you can see my PowerPoint again. Yes. Okay, great. So the starter kits, um, I'm just skipping through all this stuff. 
Um, okay, the starter kits, I'll, I'll, put, I'll post a link. Um, I'm just going to show it like this. So obviously the two scenarios I showed you was one is sending data out, that's what we did now. So you can send data out from, from your device to the cloud. And you can, and that's that's the steps involved. So you've got your MCU, you've got your note card, and you've got your note hub, which is the back end, and then you've got your end application. You can also push data back down. So if you want to turn a light on or turn it open a gate, again, you can see the way you do it is simply using JSON, it's quite straightforward. Um the note, the note, the, the note care, and then the blue starter kit consists of a note KF, a swan dev kit, as well as a, a Wi-Fi and a note card, a year, so it's a wideband one. And also a Pi hat as well. So I think it's ninety nine dollars. You can buy this, but we'll be giving two away to um, the two best ideas. So I'm, there's an email address there, blues.tinyml at gmail.com. So whoever's watching, um, submit the project idea that uses tinyml in conjunction with blues. And so my presentation is a bit messed up there. Um, and we will basically um, uh, choose the two best ones, and you get shipped the kit, and then. Hopefully you can build it and showcase it somewhere and you can take it from there. So yeah, so that's that's, that, that's basically that. So obviously we shortened time for questions. Um, so there's just one more thing I wanted to show you. I will say a two two part presentation of sorts. Um, this is this is actually interesting. So that's the blues IoT. Another thing I wanted to show for ML and IoT and for experimentation is on virtual hardware. So that's just this is gonna be a quick two minute thing. Um, this is a soon to be launched um, virtual platform where you can actually play with dev kits virtually in the cloud. And it's been built by a company called Corellium. They have created a um, hypervisor that, that, that's built on ARM. And it's basically for guys that are wanting to experiment and you don't have a pie laying around, you can build your whole workflow on this thing and you can actually then push it down. You can even use it as a testing ground and then actually deploy it to real hardware. So, and you don't need to try and rack up some people. I know, remember Marco, we tried that remote uh, Arduino thing. So you can, at the moment, there's only support for a Raspberry Pi 4 and the support for um, the STM IoT node and some of the NXP boards. So again, for ML ops and, and stuff, it's actually useful. So that, just to, um, just to whet your appetite, I'll quickly show you before I sign off. Just let me know if you can see a Firefox screen. Yeah. So here's here's the back end of, of 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 you can create you can create a device and, and these are obviously the options available. You can do a generic Android. So Corellium have built this in, in partnership with ARM. They are the guys that make the Android emulators. What's in, what's really neat and interesting about this platform is there's a lot of IMX boards there, and then here and here of course there's the STM32. They've emulated the hardware literally every component of the hardware. So it's perfect emulation if you want to think about it it's like that. So. Um, a good example is, you, and you can also use your web browser as a camera, and you can use your um, you can use your uh, your laptops. Uh, so your web your webcam as a camera. You can also use your um, microphone. I can't do it now because obviously I'm sharing it with, with Zoom, but yeah, it actually works quite well. I've actually tested Edge Impulse on here, and I've, and the, I've tested the Edge Impulse Raspberry Pi deployment, and I've gotten 80 milliseconds um, on on. Um, uh, object detection, TensorFlow object detection, the, the standard workflow. So you can see these these the, the full boot console. I don't know why it's a bit slow now, but um, my network is lagging here. But essentially, yeah, it boots up, and you have you have the console on the left, which is basically what you see on the console when it boots up, and you have the actual like VNC type display on the right, that you can actually connect to. So yeah, I think my internet is kind of bombing out here. So yeah, Peter, so that's what I Peter, to we 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 have few questions in the chat. And I think okay, I, thought, four, I can answer really? for four more minutes. I think okay, one, cool. one of the questions. Okay, so first of all, I mean, thank you for your talk. That was super, super interesting and, and informative. So um, one question had to do with 5G, 5G coverage. Yes. yes. So the question was, does the note card support 5G? Yes, so the, the, the note card uh, NB IoT version is a technically a 5G um a 5G version. So it only supports NG NB IoT, not not CAT M1. It's just it's just NB IoT. So when it says 5G, it won't be full 5G. NB IoT is obviously the narrow band IoT that is a uh, like one of the versions of 5G that is targeting IoT applications, it's more low power, it's more um, you know, it's 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 not it's not made for streaming low bandwidth. 
It's not made for streaming video. So 5G, that's the 5G coverage if it's NB IoT. So you want a normal full 5G that answers the question. And then I see can, yes, yes. Um, it can definitely be used for wildlife tracking. Of course, this obviously, wherever you're going to do it, you have to make sure there's cellular coverage. Um, but because of the built-in GPS and the low power nature of this, it's got a very, the specs are online, but it's got a very low power current, current usage. You can definitely use um, use it for 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 um, for uh, wildlife. In fact, you could probably use an okay if and build your own thing. Okay, there was one feature I forgot to mention. There's something called outbound device firmware update. It works with any ESP32 or STM32 or Nordic chip. So the Swan currently obviously being and the the the, the other fruit are both being supported. You can actually just upload your firmware uh, into the into the back end. Into there's a dialogue I didn't show, and you can just up uh, download your write your code in Arduino, dump your sketch out or your or your your in STM32, dump it out, and you literally up, update it, and you can actually push firmware. They call it outboard DFU because the actual note card actually drives your DFU pins on the chip directly. So it actually pulls the bootloader pin um, low on like STM32. So that's quite useful for OTA deployments as well. It's actually one of the first, but that's another video. That's that that's interesting, Peter, because we covered that in the first talk today, right? About MLOps and about the fact that you oh, know, okay. it's really important to be able to update you know devices remotely. Okay, and we have yes. one more minute. So maybe you can comment on the Typical data size it, used per message. So typical, yeah. typical data size per message. Um, again, um, I'm gonna check the limit, but I, I think you can do up to a, a couple of a couple of kilobytes because you you got your 500 meg data limit. So what you're doing is when you when you send a huge message, it's the, the 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 blue proprietary stack chops your messages up into pieces. So you can send pictures, for example, um, and multimedia using base 64 encoding. And you can chop up a JPEG file and send it up, but then you're just going to obviously eat up your data plan. I'm not sure what the limit is. I can find out what the limit is um, of what the biggest single payload is, but I know it's quite big. I mean, guys have been sending photos up from, from cameras. People have been using like a, a Pi camera and stuff and sending things up like that. And um, like, 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 like the Portenta and stuff, you can send a camera picture up from the thing as well. So, yeah, that's the thing. Any other questions? So, you don't see this limited like you would see something else like a like a laura or something you know, where this, this is cellular so you just basically get, have to just maintain your your um data plan yeah okay Anybody else? okay super I, I think that was most of it and peter you're on discord right so if yes. people have some questions or comments about the wireless you know aspects of tiny mail then they can get back to you on, yes. on discord so thanks again peter and thank you all. I think that was a great day. So we have seen, you know, the complexity of moving from, you know, a demo to a product. So we we learned a lot today with with, you know, different talks. So that was super. So if there are no more comments, let me stop the recording.